Okay, y'all, let's get in here. Uh, this is the second part of the prophetic word from yesterday. Uh, we had a, a part one. And I need some people praying because we got some dis this internet kind of cutting out. Um, and so right now, this is the second part of the word divine perspective. So God is giving the body of Christ an end times perspective for the body of Christ for the end times right now that we're coming in. So um, let's go ahead and just pray in right now. We'll pray in. Uh, if you didn't see the prophetic word or hear the prophetic word yesterday, you can go back and listen to it. Uh, after we're done with this broadcast, okay? So God bless everybody. Let's pray. And Father, we thank you right now in Jesus' name, God. We glorify you. We worship you. We bind up every demon spirit of distraction right now. We come against every spirit of heaviness that's on this line. I took authority over it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We command it to go right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I loose my angels and assign them to excel in strength, hearkening to the voice of the word of God. Bless the Lord you host, you ministers of his, that does his will and pleasure to be invoked over this line and to carry this word to bring it to pass right now in Jesus' name. God, we thank you, Father, for the people that need to hear this line, for the corporate body of Christ that needs to hear this word. We ask you to bring the people in, God, that need this message right now, that their perspective their perception and their perspective has been off. But God said, I'm about ready to loose a new divine perspective into your mind right now. There's going to be an impartation of the prophetic and the apostolic on this line today. The Lord said, as I've been fasting and praying, you can even see I lost almost 25 pounds in a 21 day fast. Uh, so I'll be getting that weight back, but you guys keep me in prayer because I, uh, you know, you can sacrifice some things because listen, God said that in Romans 12, 1 and 2, that we are to present our bodies. Come on, somebody as a living sacrifice unto the Lord. Holy and acceptable, which is what? Our reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be a transformed by the renewing of our mind that what? We may be able to prove the good, acceptable, and then what? There is a perfect will of God. And so God has kind of given us a new perspective to see into the perfect will of God. And so keep me in prayer as we're going to bring this word forward. It got overheated yesterday. I wasn't able to get it all on here. But this is divine perspectives. It's a prophetic corporate release uh, to the body of Christ about an end time pattern, an end time edict, an end time decree that's coming from the court of heaven that we're going to have to have a new pattern, the Lord said, for the end times because of this COVID-19, because of what are we see in the race wars. The Lord is saying the old patterns and the old paradigms are not going to work. So we're going to have to go into prayer and fasting. And that's why the Lord had me fast for almost like uh, around a 21 day fast to get to this place in the Lord because he said I need my prophets and my apostles my watchmen to be fasting and praying because we need to know I, we were talking about it yesterday we hear from the council rooms of God so we can tell the body of Christ what to do and to lead the, the body we have the uh, the apostle the prophet the evangelist the pastor the teacher we got the five-fold ministry gifts okay so those five-fold ministry gifts we got the apostle who is the thumb he can touch every other finger okay so the apostle can move in in the office of the prophetic he can move in the office of an evangelist he can move in the, in the pastorate he can move as a teacher but we got the prophet which is the index finger so the prophet is the pointer okay so we we when we look at it we see the apostle and prophet or the foundations of the church so that the apostle is building and leading but the prophet is guiding. Come on, somebody. We need prophets that know how to point. Which way is God going? Okay, because we, we, we get, we're getting mixed up. Okay, and then we got the evangelist. He is the longest finger because he can extend, come on, somebody, further than all the other offices. He goes outside. He extends and goes out and gets the souls and brings them into the church. And then we got the pastor. He is the ring finger because he's married to the church. Come on, somebody. The pastor is married to the church. He is the shepherd. And then we got the pinky finger, which is the teacher. And he can touch all five fingers, but on the way back up. Okay? Because he stands in a lower position. Come on, somebody. This is what the Lord is saying. We need to get back into the pattern of the fivefold, the apostolic. And so God is going to show us something here. 
Um, I'm not going to go, I'm going to go into a little bit of scripture, but not too much. Um, so yesterday when we we're talking about this pattern, edict from heaven, uh, standing in the council of God, Jeremiah said, who is standing in the council that they may hear the words of the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, and then who can command the angels, right? And so I'm going to give you a really quick example. I was fasting and I was doing a conference call. Let me let me let you know how this works in the realm of, of hearing from the court of heaven. Okay, so I was doing a conference call. The Lord had me preach out of um, Daniel to this person, Daniel chapter 7 through Daniel chapter 10. And it talked about Daniel chastened himself three full weeks before the Lord. And then notice as he chastened himself three full weeks is 21 days. And so it was fasting and prayer for 21 days. And as he did, he went into what's called an ecstatic vision or a trance. Okay, like Peter was on the rooftop. He went in, into what is called ecstasis realm. He went into makaze, which is a realm of a trance. Okay, and he saw the four corners of the heavens open and he saw the four footed beast come down. And notice that at that point, if Peter would not have been in that trance, he would not have saw the vision to know that the gospel was going unto the Gentiles. It was going from the Jew first, come on somebody, and also to the Greek, okay? But if he would not have been obedient to this heavenly vision, then the gospel would not have gone on into the world, okay? And so it was something different. It was something strange. Come on, somebody. Somebody was like, wait a minute. Peter said, I'm a Jew, God, because he saw the four four-footed unclean animals and he knows in the old testament covenant law you can't eat unclean animals but god said to him kill peter and eat and peter's like whoa what are you talking about god you're going against your own laws right he said he said kill and eat i've never eaten anything he said unclean lord it's never touched my lips and he he said do not call what i call clean unclean so it looked like god was changing something but god knows the end from the beginning so he was beginning to change something but if peter would not have been obedient to that trance we would not have seen the gospel go to the nations and so he said there is a man named cornelius and what this man was not saved y'all because we got to get out of this paradigm of the churchy religious uh, paradigm. This is why the Lord said that he is taking the church out of the building. Come on, somebody. The church is coming out of the building because the church is not the building. The church is the people. Come on, somebody. Because the church is not the building. The church is the people. So God said, I'm, I'm going to cause, allow this COVID-19 to come, all this death, and then race wars starting to happen in the street because I'm going to bring a different pattern, okay? So I'm bringing a different pattern pattern and end time vision and if we don't have some apostles and prophets out here that are awake some watchmen on the wall watching and praying like jesus said okay in these end times that it, we're not going to know what to do next okay so we got some some churches meeting some churches come on somebody some churches some churches have got to come in. Let me get an uh, illustration here. And, and we got to put masks on. Come on, somebody, to go to church. Now, come on, somebody. Something is happening. So listen, y'all. God is changing up a pattern. And we've got to hear from heaven what this new pattern is getting. Now, notice, and I'm going to finish with this for a minute, what, what I'm on on Acts chapter uh, uh, Acts chapter 10. So he says, go to Cornelius' house. The man is praying. Okay, he's not, he's a Gentile. He's a Gentile, but he said he has offered up prayers unto me and he has given alms. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. He's not even a, uh, he's not even a Christian. What? Okay, this could be a Muslim doing this, okay? Because God, this is the paradigm that's changing, y'all. We can't just think, oh, this is an unbeliever. We're not gonna, we're not gonna hang out with him, or we're not gonna talk to him because they're unbelievers. That's, that's why people aren't getting saved. So these, this guy could have been a Muslim. Really, he was a Jew, right? So the, the, we got Messianic Jews coming to Christ. We got Jesus appearing in visions to Muslims, to, 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 to Buddhists. Come on. So we got, we can't be so religious. Okay, and so he's saying, go over here to this unclean 
Jew, I mean, this unclean Gentile, excuse me, he was a Gentile, and he's offering up these these offerings to me. He's he's giving donations. So it's like a person that is very charitable. You know, people that, that are very charitable, they're always volunteering here and there, but they're not believers. Okay, but God recognizes this stuff. And he said, this man, I cannot help but to bless him because he has done the things that I require even of my people that aren't they aren't doing right and so he goes and says go over here and bless this man and and he's praying and then he gave Cornelius listen to this y'all the same vision that a man named Peter was going to come to him in a, right so that means that that an unbeliever can have visions, okay? So he was going to him, and he, and at the same time, Peter was getting a, a, a trance from God saying, you're going to him. So this is how destiny becomes, okay? So right now, God is talking to someone about you, and he's talking about to you about someone, okay? And that there's going to be a time when those two meet. Okay, and then notice the power of God came upon, as Peter came, he preached the gospel unto him, and the power, come on somebody, of God fell upon them, the Holy Ghost, and they began, listen to this y'all, they began to start speaking in tongues and prophesying, so listen, nobody laid hands on them, come on somebody, so there was a different paradigm, before we were seeing, okay, we baptized them in water, they come up out of the water, then we baptize them in the Holy Ghost, shut up till they start speaking in tongues and we know they're filled with the spirit but God said no this pattern is where my glory is going to start to descend and I'm going to do it I was talking about this in the July prophetic word there would be instantaneous glory manifestations that literally we would in the realm of faith we have to believe in the realm of the anointing we have to do something but in the realm of glory it is God's hand that is stretched forth Acts chapter 4 to that the signs and wonders might be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus and so here the Holy Ghost all Peter did was preach the gospel unto Cornelius's house not just Cornelius it was all his house he invited he was a, a man of great uh, honor he, he he invited all these people so notice a whole bunch of people got saved at the same time and it, it was just like the jailer in Acts 16 uh, with Paul and Silas that the whole house got saved come on somebody so I I see the Lord saying unto me today that the paradigm is changing. I've already prophesied house churches, home fellowships, miracle ministries coming out of houses. Uh, and this is the new paradigm, the Lord's saying, that a new uh, a, a new church is forming, a book of Acts, an apostolic pattern, if you will. And so this apostolic pattern is coming. And here the Holy Ghost fell and they began to speak in tongues and they prophesied right away. Then Peter said, well, who should forbid water? Right? So he took them. He didn't wait for two weeks. He went and baptized them in their bathtub. Come on, somebody. Or you can take them out to a lake or a river. But baptize them because you died with Christ. Okay? So you, if you die with Christ, you have an old body. Okay? So you're carrying around some old dead body with you. Baptism is not just symbolic. It has power. Okay, so when you go down, you bury the body in baptism. So you're burying the old dead man because you don't want to drag a dead body around with you, right? And then you rise out of the water in newness of life, in the spirit of Christ. Behold, if any man or woman, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, be in Christ, they are a new creation. All old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Now, Romans 6, 4, you'll still walk in the, in the newness of life, right? And so... It was a backward paradigm is what I'm trying to tell you. They had never seen it done like this. And so what if Peter would have rejected that? Then I, I'm telling you, it's like now what God is saying with this new pattern coming for the end times, then the gospel wouldn't have went to the nations. So the Lord is saying we've got to break this religious spirit off of us in the church. That's why COVID-19 is happening. That's why we're being pushed out of the assemblies. Come on, somebody. The church is beyond the four walls. The church is the ecclesia, the called out ones. Come on. We're separated unto the gospel. So thank you, Father, right now. I praise you, God, and I thank you. So then I was talking about, the Holy Ghost was, was talking about yesterday that God's going to release a new pattern and edict to the apostles and prophets first, and then they will give it to the body of Christ. Okay, and so it, it was the same that happened 
Let's talk about the tabernacle of Moses. At the camp, tabernacle of congregation, Moses, God said, make this unto the pattern that I showed you on the mount. So when, when Moses went up to get the Ten Commandments, God also showed him, what? A pattern, okay, to put, to make a tabernacle. Why? Typology. Come on, prophets. Come on, my theologians. Typology. Types and shadows. It was a type of something that was coming in the New Testament. Most of the time when we see the pattern of the tabernacle, then we see the 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 uh, temple of Solomon, which was a higher realm. Then we see uh, uh, the city of David, Zion. Come on. That is a, a typology of Christ, okay? That God, listen to me, people of God, wanted to find a way to what? Tent or tabernacle among his people. He wanted to dwell with his people. Therefore, he sent Christ, right, who broken down the middle wall of partition between us that we would have a way to come to God sinless, right? Because no flesh shall glory in his presence and there could be no sin in his presence. So through the veil, come on, somebody, he brought us through the veil so we could have fellowship with God so God could tabernacle with his people because this is what the end time is y'all that God is going to tabernacle with us do you know what the new Jerusalem is coming down from heaven and the Bible says it's as a bride come on adorned for her husband it is not only the bride of Christ everybody says the body of Christ is the bride of Christ the body of Christ is the bride of Christ but in the new Jerusalem okay because the new Jerusalem's coming down from heaven, adorned as a bride for a husband. So what is God doing? He's coming to tabernacle. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming to marry his bride. Come on, somebody. And he already has a kingdom set up. That's the new Jerusalem where we'll rule and reign with him 1,000 years. Okay, so what is God doing right now? He's getting us ready for the marriage supper of the Lamb. Come on, somebody. Revelation 19. We have to be, get our, uh, that's why God has me wearing white today. We have to get our garments white, uh, white without spot or blemish. There will be a glorious church. Not all the church will be raptured. Come on, somebody. There will be uh, the second, first resurrection, the second res resurrection. Okay. The first resurrection will be the glorious church. Those who have cleansed their, uh, they, they've cleansed their garments and the blood of the lamb. Okay. Those I believe is second Thessalonians chapter two. They'll be caught up to meet the Lord in the air, right? To ever be with him. And then I believe those are going to be the saints, come on, that come back on white horses with Jesus, come on, for the second coming, when his when his feet land, Zechariah 14, on the Mount of Olives, and the mountains will split. Come on, somebody. And then we're going to see uh, a new kingdom set up where Jesus will be the king. And all nations will have to come to Jerusalem to worship so that's the thousand year reign of Christ and Satan himself will be bound. Am I in the scriptures or what? 1,000 years, okay? And so this is something God is preparing us for. Now I'm going to show you. And then notice as God gave a pattern. Come on, somebody. He gave a pattern to King David and I got my scriptures out here. I'm not going through a lot of scriptures, but uh, well, just because you guys know I love to use scripture, but he gave a pattern to King David to build for Solomon because King David had blood on his hands. So King David could not build it. But he said, 1 Samuel chapter 7, I believe it is. Let's see, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Um, yeah, where he said that I'm going to give it you a pattern. Second uh, Samuel 7, I believe. He's going to give you a pattern. There it is. Um, and he's going to give it to you to give to your son Solomon because there's blood on your hands. You can't build it, but Solomon can. But I'm going to give you according to a pattern. Now, hallelujah, Jesus. Okay, so let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. So uh, he gives him this pattern to build the temple, right? Um, why, why pattern? Okay, the Greek word for father, we were going through this yesterday, our father who art in heaven, holy, hallowed, be your name, meaning separate, holy. You are the God above all gods. You're separate from everything else, right? So holy is just meaning oneness, separate, 
Okay, the word for father in the Greek is pater. Listen to me, pater, pater, okay? So that if you look in the connotation of that, the word is pattern, okay? So a father, come on somebody, is a pattern, okay? So if we have not a pattern to follow, then we're gonna get messed up. So we follow the pattern, come on, of our father. Many of us that have earthly fathers, I was explaining this to one of my spiritual daughters a couple days ago. If, if you have an earthly father who has not set a good pattern, right, then you have nothing to, to look to to establish the next generation. So if he, has not, if he was an alcoholic, he beat his, his wife. Now you got another generation of men that are beating their wives. It's because of what they saw, come on, in their pattern, their father, their pattern. So if we have no spiritual fathers, come on somebody, then we have no pattern, okay? So remember that. So the pattern, the pattern, was given from the father to the father, David, to the son Solomon. So it was a pattern, right? A pattern. And so, uh, and it got built according to that. So it was what I prophesied yesterday, a multi-generational pattern, an edict that's coming that will be multi-generational. It won't be just one thing. Now, what was it? How do we know that this is something that is in times, okay? Let's look at scripture. I'm not, you know me, I'm gonna give you some scripture. There are some things that have been hidden we talked about this yesterday from ages and generations, but now, come on, somebody, is going to be revealed unto the servants, the prophets, okay? So here, let's look at this. I want to show you this. Let's look in your Bible. 1 Peter chapter 1 and 5. He talks about, let's, let's, let's talk about 1 Peter 1, verse 3 through 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy, listen, has begotten us again unto what? A lively hope, a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to what? An inheritance. Come on. What do you get from a father? An inheritance. Come on, somebody. To an inheritance, to his son Jesus. What was the inheritance that Jesus got from his father? He got... He got the crown, right? He got a uh, redemption. He brought us back uh, from the sin. And he, therefore, his name becomes the name above every name. At the name of Jesus, he gets the highest name because he did the highest sacrifice. Come on, somebody. So here Jesus is from, he's raised from the dead. And he also is the first to be resurrected from the dead. Jesus was the first to be resurrected so that we can be resurrected into life. That meaning we don't have to die, but we can have what? Eternal life. So that's what Jesus did, right? To inheritance, incorruptible, undefiled, and that fitteth not away, reserved where? In heaven for you. But look at this, verse 5, mark it down. Who are kept, us, by the power of God through faith unto salvation, what? Ready to be revealed in the last time. Oh. Ready to be revealed when? 2,000 years ago? No. 100 years ago? No. In the last time. Okay, so now let's look at Colossians uh, 126. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Colossians 126. Let, no, let's go here first. I'll go to Colossians 126 in a minute. Let's go to Ephesians first. The Ephesians chapter 1. I'm going to share this with you, and then I'll go into Ephesians chapter 3, and then we'll go to Colossians 126. Okay. So, he says here, right? Uh, verse 9. Ephesians 1, let's start with Ephesians 1 and 3. Blessed be the God of Father. Notice he keeps saying God the Father because the Father is the pattern. Come on, get it. Okay, blessed be the God of our Father, right? Blessed be the God and the Father, the pattern of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has what? Blessed us with all 
spiritual blessings in where? Heavenly places. When I was telling you yesterday, Ephesians 2 and 6, we are not only, we're seated in two realms at the same time. We're on earth in our bodies, but in the spirit, in the spirit, we're uh, in, in seated in, with Christ in heavenly places. Okay, so we already have all spiritual blessings. Peter said, the apostle Peter said, right, um, that God has already given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him. So we already have it. We're not trying to get stuff. That's what the church doesn't understand. We actually already have it. It's about tapping into it and manifesting it by faith. Okay. And then he goes on to say, verse 5, He has predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his own will. Right? And then he goes on to, to, to the praise of his glory, of his grace, his grace, right? Because we've been saved by grace through faith. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. To the praise of his glory, to his grace, wherein he has made us acceptable in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Verse 8. Now here it is, what I want you to mark down. Wherein he has abounded unto us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us, listen, the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure he has purposed in himself. So there's a mystery in God's will. The word for mystery is mysterion. It means the mystery is only revealed to those who are initiated unto that mystery. So that means that this is what Jesus told the disciples. He had... 12 disciples but only three Peter James and John were in the inner group in the inner circle and then they had a Jews a Judas a devil right so we we see this same pattern right and so he imparted to these people but he said it has not been given to the world or these other people to know the mysteries of the kingdom but it has been given to you and it's from them it is hid, that it might be fulfilled by Isaiah the prophet that said, seeing they might not see and hear and they might not hear. So God hides information from the enemy so that the enemy doesn't get it through the mystery. Come on, the mystery of his will. Okay, so verse 10. Now look at this. We're talking about 1 Peter 1, 5, things that are being revealed in the end times, right? Okay, so verse 10. 10, that in the dispensation, my God, Holy Ghost, of the fullness of times, come on, at the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both, listen to this, the pattern which is on heaven and on the earth. Come on, there will be a new heaven and a new earth, not just a new heaven, both things in heaven and earth, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Hallelujah. I keep seeing that in Ephesians 1.11. That is when you see 1.11, and I see it on calls all the time, you'll see that God is doing everything after the purpose, come on, and the counsel of his will. It's God's sovereignty. When you see 1.11, God's saying, my sovereign will is being done in your life. Okay? And then you see Romans 1.11, which is God uh, imparting spiritual gifts, when you see Paul in Romans 1.11, that I may come and part some spiritual gift unto you to the end that you might be established to both mutual faith, you and I, right? So now we see this mystery. Where else have we seen this mystery? This mystery that's going to be revealed in the last time, right? Let's look at Ephesians chapter uh, 3, okay? Now, look at this. Let's go to Colossians 1.26, and then we'll go to Ephesians chapter 3, because I want to do it in that order. Okay, so we'll go to uh, Colossians Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let's go to Colossians 1.26. Then we'll go back to Ephesians chapter 3. Colossians 1.26. Um, we'll start at 25. Okay. So he says, uh, Whereof I am made a minister. Look at this. All right, turn on the air conditioning. Hold on a second. I am made a minister. Look at this. According to the dispensation of God, which is given unto you to fulfill the word of God. Now mark verse 26. And 27 down, even the mystery, come on somebody, which has what? Been hid, my God, from ages and generations, come on now. But now, is being made manifest unto the saints, now, okay, to whom God would make known, hallelujah, what is the riches of his glory in what? This mystery, 
this mystery among the Gentiles, meaning among not to say, but the unsaved, that's what we're talking about, this pattern changing, come on, uh, the Gentiles, the nations, which is Christ in you, or us, now Christ dwells in us, tabernacles in us, the Spirit of Christ comes to live in us, Christ in you, the hope of glory. He's no more abiding in the temple, the tabernacle of congregation, he's in us. That's the mystery, which we preach. We warn every man and teaching even every man in all wisdom that we may present every man what? Perfect in Christ Jesus. Wherefore I also labor striving according to his working which worketh in me mightily. Hallelujah. So here it is the mystery. Now let's go back to Ephesians chapter 3. Who, who is the mystery being revealed to? Just anybody? No, because Jesus said it's not been given to them to know it. I'm hiding it from them. Why? Because I can't be trusted, Judas. You're, Judas has been sitting around uh, the table, fellowshipping with us, yeah, breaking bread with us the whole time. Come on, somebody. And he had a devil, okay? And he was going to uh, betray Christ, okay? And so here it is that he was supposed to be one of the inner circle but, but there's always a Judas in, 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 in every circle. There's always a Judas in every church. Okay? And so the mystery will not just be revealed to anyone in these end times. Okay? So here, 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 here it is scripture. I'll give you scripture. Ephesians 3. Where's Paul talking about it now? Verse 2. Ephesians 3 verse 2. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given what? To me, were, to you were. So Paul's saying this gospel, uh, gener G Galatians chapter 1, was not given to me by man, but it was given to me by revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ knocked Paul off his horse in Acts chapter 9. Come on. He knocked him. He blinded him with the light. And he spoke and he said, and then he did the account again in Acts 22 when he said, I got knocked off this horse and I heard a voice speaking unto me. And he said, I, I, it's hard for you to kick against the pricks, right? So who, he said, who am you persecuting me? Saul, Saul, why are thou persecuting me, right? And he said, who are you, Lord? Right, because he knew he was some kind of God, right? He said, I'm Jesus, whom thou persecutest, right? Uh, it's hard to kick against the prick. But when he went on over to Acts 22, he said, and he made this account known to King Agrippa, he said that this heavenly vision, uh, Jesus continued to prepare to him to make known unto him the gospel, the mystery of the gospel. So in Galatians 1, he said, I was not taught this doctrine or this gospel by man. I was taught directly through the revelation of Jesus Christ. So this is in a pattern. It's not going to be necessarily... Like, we're not going to be able to go by an old pattern even in the Bible. We're going to have to be taught a new pattern by revelation. And the Lord said, that's why he told Daniel, come on now, when he gave him the end time books, to seal up the book until the time of the end, right? Because the time of the end, the seals, come on somebody, of revelation will be open. And who is worthy? to unloose the suit, the seals, right? So if John said, I saw and I started to cry because there was no one worthy to unloose the seals, right? But then he said, don't cry. An angel came and said, don't cry because there's one, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin. And he is worthy. He is the one that walks sinless in sinless flesh to redeem us, to redeem all mankind. He is worthy to loose the seals. Hallelujah. And so there is what he's saying. If you have heard of the dispensation, meaning the stewardship of the grace of God, the, uh, which he has given to you, word, verse 3, how that by revelation, come on, somebody mark this down, Ephesians 3 and 3, how that by revelation he made known unto me, who? Jesus made known unto him, the mystery, as I wrote afore in a few words, whereby, verse 4, when you read, you may understand what? My knowledge in the mystery of Christ. So he's saying that I, I've got this not by man, but by the gift of revelation knowledge. And this is what Jesus said in Matthew 16, when he said, who do men say that I am? 
who do men say that I am? And some, um, 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 the, all the other ones, they didn't wait to hear from God. They just start blah, 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 blah. This is what we usually do. Okay, so they started saying, well, some say that you're uh, Jeremiah. Some say that you're Elijah. And some say you're this. And some say you're that. So what they were saying was the common knowledge of the day. They were, they were re, uh, regurgitating the gossip of the day. Okay, so that, that's what we hear a lot in churches, regurgitated prophetic preaching, or re, not prophetic preaching, regurgitated sermons. Jeremiah 23 says the prophets are stealing words from one another, false visions, false dreams, okay? So here it is that, uh, but, G, but Peter waited, and he got the gift of revelation knowledge, and he said, he said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And, and Jesus was like shocked because it had not been revealed who Jesus was yet, okay? So he said, Simon Barjona, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father, which is in heaven, my pattern, right? Because I do all things what my Father tells me to do. I hear what he says and I do what he de says to do. So my pattern right so he said but my father has revealed this unto you and then he said upon this rock will i build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it on what rock on peter no the rock of revelation knowledge that he is the christ the son of the living god so that's the mystery revelation how that by revelation the spirit of wisdom and revelation ephesians 1 17 to 20. so he says verse 4 that you may understand what my knowledge in the mystery of christ so he gives certain revelation knowledge to certain apostles he was an apostle to certain prophets and then look he he proves it ephesians chapter uh, uh three and five which listen to this mark this down which in other ages come on was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now, now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. So that's who he's revealing it to, the holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. And then he goes on to say that this, the mystery is verse 6, that the, the nations, the Gentiles, should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of the promise of Christ by the gospel, whereunto I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me, where, uh, uh, unto me by the effectual working of his power, right? Uh, so it's a supernatural, the word energeo means like energy, power, the grace of God. It's not me that do it, but the grace of God that's working in me, right? And then he says, unto me who am less, because notice, if you abase yourself, you if you humble yourself, you'll be exalted. If you exalt yourself, you'll be humbled. Unto me who am less than least of all the saints, because he knew he was persecuting Christians, Paul was killing Christians. So he, don't forget where you came from, somebody. God is saying, don't forget where you came from. Okay, where I've lifted you up out of the miry prey, clay, even if you are an apostle or a prophet or a pastor, or leading a church, right? So he said, I'm the least of all the saints. This grace, even I should preach among the Gentiles. What? This is the gospel that we are supposed to preach unto the nations, the what? Unsearchable riches of Christ. That's what he said. I'm to preach the unsearchable riches of Christ, and then mark verse 9 down, Ephesians 3 and 9, and to make all men see Come on, somebody. What is the fellowship of the mystery? Mark it down. What is the fellowship of the mystery? Listen, here's the key. Which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God, who made all, created all things by Jesus Christ. So if you don't know God, you will not know the mystery. Come on, somebody. So it's about getting to know your father, the pattern. God is the new pattern. If you want to tabernacle with God, you got to come up into the realm of glory. And the Lord said that you are, the great door will open in heaven, Revelation 4, 4, and you'll hear a voice behind you as a trumpet. And he said, come up hither, that I'll show you things that must have come to pass. Where did he say? Hereafter. And then he said there was 24 seats with the 24 elders sitting upon them. 
That was the council room of God. He was hearing the council of God. He seen thunders and lightnings and rainbows. What does a rainbow stand for? The covenant, the covenant blessings. Come on, somebody. The covenant that I'll never destroy the earth again by water. But I gave a prophecy yesterday that there's a flood coming after the pattern of Moses, but not a flood of water. It's going to be a flood of fire. Come on, somebody. Because he said, I will not destroy the earth again by water, but by fire. Okay, so we, so the Lord said there's going to be a flood after the pattern of Noah, uh, Noah that he's going to give us the pattern, come on, to build another ark, to, to endure the flood. Because he said, Jesus said, Matthew 24, there would be great tribulation on the earth such as never have been seen. And then he said, as in the days of Noah, Come on, what was happening in the days of Noah? They were eating and drinking and marrying until uh, the flood came and then they got into the ark. The ark was another type, come on, a typology and shadow of salvation. If you're not in the ark, in the secret place, in Christ, you're going to be destroyed by this flood, global flood that's coming on the earth. And the Lord said that that pattern to make the ark to get into Christ, to the salvation that we need, so that, notice there was only eight souls that were saved. Come on, somebody. So it's, so narrow is the way that leadeth to life. Broad is the way that leadeth unto destruction. And few there be, are gonna, many are going to walk in that way, and few are going to find the light. And so he's saying that there, there's going to be a flood. Habakkuk 2.14 says, The knowledge, come on, of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth. As the waters cover the sea. Whoa. As the waters cover the sea. As there was a flood. Come on. A flood of waters. Come on. But it's the water of the glory of the Lord. The fire and the glory is going to hit the earth. Hallelujah. Because God's going to come and tabernacle among his people. He's going to come and tent among his people. Come on, somebody. The new Jerusalem is coming down. From heaven adorned as a bride for her husband. That's the mystery. There's a new mystery being revealed. If our eyes are open and our ears are open unto it, the Lord said we will find the pattern. It'll be a new pattern. God said that we will find. There will be secrets in this pattern, the Lord said. Even as it is said in Ephesians chapter 3, that Christ, come on now, this is a secret this is part of it, that verse 10. Let's look at verse 10, because this is part of the secret. To the intent. Now, why does God want to make this revealed? To the intent that now, listen to this, unto the principalities and the powers in the heavenly places, right, might be known by the church. Listen to this, the manifold wisdom of God. So, so this is the intent that we might make all men Preach the gospel to all men that they might be saved, right? To know the mystery of Christ, okay, uh, that has been hid from ages and generations. Then he goes on to say, why? To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So there... Every time we have the angels and the messengers and we have the courts of heaven and the great cloud of witnesses watching us, they're all watching us. They're trying to find out. They can't, uh, angels can't get salvation. So they watch us and they're like, wow, what is man? One angel said to another in, in uh, Psalms 8, what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him? That one angel was talking to the another angel saying, what is it that you love about this these fleshly men and women that you created God, right? And so to the intent that unto the principalities, not only the not only the angels, but the fallen angels. Come on, somebody. The the principalities, the powers, because Paul says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against angels and principalities, powers, rules of darkness of this age and spiritual wickedness high places, that they might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. So that this secret, this mystery Surely the Lord God will do nothing unless he first reveals his secret unto his servants the prophet. So there the mystery will be revealed. Verse 5, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, but is now being revealed unto his holy, uh, holy, notice that word, meaning separated. You have to be holy. Holiness without, Hebrews 12, no man. Holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. So his holy, 
apostles and prophets by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. They have to be walking in the Spirit and they have to be holy. That's, that is what they, uh, has to be their, uh, you know, their qualifications, if you will. So you have to be qualified for this. It's not just anybody, Peter, James, and John. Come on, somebody. You've got to be part of the inner circle of Christ. You don't want to be hanging out with Judas and, 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 you know, and some of the other guys that weren't quite getting it until the end. But even Peter uh, denied Christ, you know. So we, we, you know, until he got the Holy Ghost. Um, so we talked about this yesterday. We need a baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. We need fire baptized believers that we can get this new pattern and that our eyes will be enlightened. Ephesians 1.18 Listen, this is what we need, and God prophesied this yesterday. Uh, uh, Ephesians 1, 17, and I preach this all the time to tell you guys to pray prophetically, okay? I cease not to give thanks for, for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that God, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him so it's not only the spirit of of revelation we need the wisdom of god with the revelation okay that how what does it do verse 18 that the eyes the seer anointing the eyes of your heart understanding might be enlightened that's enlightenment okay you got illumination in verse one you got enlightenment in verse two right i mean in ephesians 2 so enlightened to know what is the hope of his calling, what is the riches of his glory and the inheritance in the saints, and what is exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in where? Heavenly places. Hallelujah. Far above all principalities and powers, might and dominions in every name that is named, not only in this world, but in the world to come. So he's dealt with it all. All the authority of, of, of all principalities, powers, every road, throne, dominion, every fallen angel is under the power of Christ. That's why in the name of Jesus, every knee has to bow. Philippians 2.19, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. Where? To the glory of God the Father in the heaven, the earth. Where? And under the sea, under the earth, there's an underwater kingdom. There's, there's Satan's got kingdom underwater, but even the, that kingdom, the marine kingdom, has to bow to the name of Jesus. So if you have power, you have, if you have the name of Jesus, you have power, but you have to know Jesus to really uh, have the power. You can't be like the sons of Sceva. Come on, somebody. In, in Acts 19, uh, they, 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 they were exorcists trying to cast out demons, right? And they were saying, well... Uh, trying to cast his demon out and he said Paul I know Jesus I know but who are you they had no they had no power they had no relationship and notice that the demon jumped out onto them it jumped out and they ran out of the house naked and wounded because that that stands for you have no clothing you have no covering that's why they ran out of the house naked Okay, so when Jesus said you must wait in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. So that word in duo, which means in the Greek to be clothed with power. That means you, you actually invest, that word means to invest in clothing. And so as you invest in your prophetic destiny, you get clothed in power. Okay, so that you're not naked and you're not trying to sow your own fig leaves like Adam and Eve did. Because God ended up taking those away and giving them badger skins, which stood for he, he covered them in his glory. Okay, so the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. So we have to have God's glory, and I prophesied this for July. It's got to be the glory of God that is covering us. We can't come in our own might, our own power. And so then he says, that these is far above all principalities, might, dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but the world dead over all things to the church, which is his body, is the fullness of him that fills all and all in the earth. So we, the people, are the body of Christ. We now, we now fill the, the whole earth. 
So how is the knowledge of the glory of the Lord going to cover the earth if we go out and preach the gospel through the believers, right? That Jesus is the head. We get back under the headship of Christ that we go out the body of Christ. We feel the fullness of him that fills all in all in the earth. So we now are going out and we are little Christ, if you will, right? We're a little Christ, meaning uh, uh, we have greater works. Jesus said, John 14, 12. If he who believeth on me, he shall do the same works that I do, and greater works shall he do, because I go to the Father. So John 14 and 12. And then he says, 1 John 4, 17, as he is in the world, so are we. So as Jesus was in the world, so are we. Okay? So we go and feel all in all. Through the knowledge of the glory of the Lord is us going out to preach the gospel. That's why God has pushed us out of the church. He's pushed us to go into the streets to preach the gospel. And don't be afraid of COVID-19. If God tells you to pray for somebody, pray for, for them. Now I'm going to testify to you. Okay, so I was, I was going to go back to the beginning when I was talking about, um, I was pre preaching this scripture from Daniel chapter uh, 7 through 10. And Daniel 7, 10. And I was giving this to someone, right? And do you know that it was talking about he chased himself three, four weeks? And who came to him? Gabriel, the messenger angel, was sent to him. Okay? And notice that he said in Daniel uh, 7 that he came for his words. As soon as he started to chasten himself before the Lord, fasting and prayer, that the angel came for his words. So as soon as you begin to pray, the angels come for your words. It's not like God didn't get your prayer, right? But God got his prayers, but he came down and he said, but I had to withstand the prince of Persia one in 20 days, 21 days. But it was the answer to the prayer that was coming down. And then he said, but your prince, Michael, the chief archangel helped me withstand this principality that you could get the prayer, right? And then he came about the time of the evening obligation and a man, he said a man, because angels can look like men. Okay, so uh, Hebrews 13, 2, be careful when you're entertaining strangers come some may be entertaining angels unaware. So it said, a man touched me, a man. And he said, fear not, because an angel will always say, fear not, I am Gabriel. I have come to make you understand what must become in the latter days. Okay, so these are end time visions that were given to Daniel. And those are the books that are going to be open the book of Daniel, the book of Revelation, the end time books will be unsealed because cause, cause, cause God told the angel to tell him to seal the book up till the time of the end. Okay. And so as I was prophesying and preaching this, do you know when you speak the word, I teach you guys this in, in um, Psalm 103, 20, 21, they hearken to the voice of the word of God, meaning they hear the word and they activate. Okay. And so when you speak and preach the word, that's why you see me preaching the word. Okay, then they come for the word. Okay, and so they, it says, the Bible says, they excel in strength, hearkening to the voice of the word of God. Bless the Lord, you host, you ministers of his that does his will and pleasure. So they carry out the will of God. The angels do it. So uh, true prophets work with angels. True prophets know how to command angels from the council of heaven because we're standing in the council we're here in the father son holy ghost and we're hearing what the angels are being commanded so the lord said now you speak and the angels will move okay so they excel what does excel mean they get stronger they get stronger and stronger and stronger when you use your angels so as i was using my angels and i was chastening myself 21 days you can see i lost a lot of weight Right? But I'll get it back because I'm a living sacrifice. I'll get it back. Okay? But listen, as I was chastening myself, the angel of the Lord was said unto me, listen to me, y'all. I was asleep. And this angel came to Daniel in a dream. And I was asleep. And it was like, it was about a little bit before the day spring, 6 o'clock a.m. There's a day spring that arises every day at 6 o'clock. It's called a day spring. And that everything in heaven and earth shift back to where it was. So if there's even principalities, powers, if there's any demonic warfare, if the day spring at 6 a.m. every morning and every time zone arises and they don't legally go back to shift, they can die. So this, ha this is for witches and warlocks too. So when the day spring rises at 6 a.m., everything shifts. 
if you notice everything in the earth shifts at six o'clock a.m. every morning so it's not just when the sun rises it's something it's it's it's, it's a time thing okay so I, I right before 6 a.m. an angel came to me in my dream and said I have to wake you up early today I have a message for you and that was exactly what the angel said I heard it as if I heard it as if you were talking to me right he said, I have to wake you up early. I have a message for you. And all of a sudden, ding, 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 my phone rings. And it was my, my brother, my friend, Prophet Darius Johnson. And he said, Prophet, I got a word for you. Come on, somebody. And so God sent the prophet to give me a word, right? And the angel came first and spoke because the word messenger, come on, somebody, is, 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 is can be co uh, it can be, uh, you know, it can mean actually a prophet. It can be an angel, messenger, or a prophet. Come on, somebody. And so uh, God sent the angel to tell me the prophet was coming, right? And so this is when we see in Job 33. Job 33, and I'll show you it real quick because the Holy Ghost is going here. So Job 33, he says, uh, Job 33, 14, 15, to the end of the chapter, there's a secret about angels and messengers. I'll get to the point in a minute. Okay, so he says, uh, he says in Job 33 that God speaks once. He speaks twice in a dream, in a vision of the night when deep sleep falls upon men and he what? He says, he says they perceive it not. That's what he said. He said uh, God speaks once or in one way or another way, right? Yea, twice, but men perceive it not. Or, or the uh, ESV says, um, God speaks in one way or speaks in another way in, in the daytime, but we're too busy to hear, right? So he says, verse 15, Job 33, 15, in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men in slumberings upon the bed, then he opens up their ears, come on somebody, and he sealeth their instruction, okay? So if, if God can't get to you in the daytime because you're too busy, he'll send an angel, to come into your dreams and that's what happened to me okay and then he said that he may what withdraw man from what his purpose and hide pride from man so it's to draw us away from our own thing it's to hide pride because it pride god can't work with a proud person pride god hates pride that's the number one leviathan spirit is the deepest hardest principality he is the chief over the children of pride okay so god hates seven things god hates uh, uh uh proverbs proverbs six a proud look a lying tongue those who sow discord among the brethren all that right okay so pride he has to send this to hide pride and draw us away from our own purpose verse 18 he keepeth back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword he is chastened listen to this he is chastened up with great pain, my God, upon his bed and the multitude of his bones with strong pain, my God, so that his life and whoreth bread and his soul dainty meat. So how many of you know when you're sleeping, you get tormented by demons, you know, and you're, you're, your body's racking with pain in the middle of the night? Well, God chastens. Oh, those who God loves, he chasteneth. So he allows sometimes these demons to, 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 to torment us right at nighttime, to, to wake us up, okay? And what are they trying to do? They're trying to take your soul to the pit. There's an under, they try to take your soul under the water kingdom into the pit of hell to Hades, right? Or, or you know, and so, but God, listen to this. Verse 21, the flesh is consumed away that it cannot be seen and his bones that were not seen stick out. How many, like me, lost a lot of weight, right? Yes, his soul draweth near unto the grave. Listen to this. And his life to the destroyers. What is the destroyers? The demons. The demons. So, so the devil, this is what Jesus said. While men slept, the enemy came and sold tares among them. So while you sleep, the devil's trying to come and take your soul. To hell, the demons, the destroyers, the Abaddon spirit, Apollyon. Verse 23, but here's what I'm talking about with the messenger. 
It can be either, uh, uh, you know, exchanged from uh, Anglios, Moloch in the Hebrew, meaning an angel, or a prophet. Okay, so that's what he's saying in verse 23. Job 33, 23. If there be a messenger with him, listen to this, an interpreter, one among a thousand, to show unto man his uprightness, then God, he said, he is gracious unto him and says, deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. And it also is a typology of Jesus Christ, right? So if Jesus came as the, the messenger, right, to redeem us from the pit. So you see all the types and shadows of Christ and, and the pattern of the old covenant, right? And so here it is. What will happen? Verse 25, his flesh shall be fresher than a child's and he shall return or she shall return to the days of their youth hallelujah it's just like hallelujah it's just like the psalmist said psalm 1 103 and 5 uh, bless the lord O my soul and forget not his benefits who healeth all my diseases who delivereth my soul right and it goes on to say in psalm 103 and 5 it says he satisfies my mouth with good things and he renews my youth like the eagles okay so god will renew literally your youth come on somebody this is what he said if there's a messenger one among a thousand that will come verse 25 his flesh shall be fresher than a child's and he shall return unto the days of, of his youth i come to prophesy to somebody today that god said your flesh is going to return fresher than a child's and God's going to return you to the days of your youth. Your youth will be renewed like an eagle, I prophesy in Jesus' name. God's going to bring a messenger, an interpreter, one among a thousand to show you the mystery of Christ, right? The mystery which has been hid from ages and generations and he shall pray. This is what's going to happen in verse 26 when this messenger comes in your dream, right? He said, verse 26, then he shall pray unto God and he will be favorable, come on somebody, unto him, and he shall see his face, hallelujah, he shall see his face with joy, for he will render unto man his righteousness, my God, thank you Father, so he will render to you your righteousness, he looketh upon man, and if any say, listen to this, if any say, I have sinned, this is where repentance comes in. Come on, somebody. I have sinned and perverted my way that which was right, and it profited me not. Come on, somebody. So here, if you will repent and say, Lord, I tried it to do it in my own way, but it profited me not. It didn't profit me, God, to do it my own way. Then he says, verse 29, Oh, 28, he will deliver his soul from going into the pit, and his life shall see the light. Who's the light? The Lord Jesus Christ, the light of the world, a city on the hill that cannot be hid. Hallelujah. That he will see Jesus. He will see the light and bring back his soul from the pit to be enlightened with the light of the living. Hallelujah. So if you repent, if God, if you will say, I did what I did out there in those streets and it didn't profit me. I, I, I partied and I went clubbing and I chased women and chased men, but it didn't profit me. I used heroin and cocaine. I smoked crack till it was coming out of my ears, but it didn't profit me nothing, God. I slept with many women, women and men, but it didn't give me any satisfaction, Lord. But I came to Jesus and I got pleasure Hello, boy. Shut up, boy, 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 shut. I came, uh, 16, Psalm 1611. He said, in my presence is fullness of joy. And at my right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. So the pleasure that you're going to get in Jesus doesn't compare to the pleasure of the world. I, I tell you, it doesn't compare. Jesus will give you the pleasure that you're desiring. It's not all boring, that Christian stuff. Come on, some... That's why God's taking this, this paradigm shift. It's not about the religious churchianity. Come on, churchianity, Christi, uh, Christendom, whatever they call it. Okay, so, so God is going to send you a messenger. So here, prophet Darius calls me. The angel shows up in my dream. He says, prophet, I got to wake you up early. And I heard him. I thought it was somebody talking to me, and, and, you know, in the natural and it was in my dream. I have to wake you up and early. I got a message for you. And the phone rings. And Prophet Darius 
gets on the phone and says, Prophet, I got a message for you. He repeated exactly what the angel said, right? And then he gave went on and gave the message, and I got delivered. I've been doing all this deliverance on people, and all of a sudden, all these demons are attacking me, but God sent me a deliverer. Come on, somebody, because Jesus said, if you give, it shall be given unto you. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over, well, men give it to your bosom because with the same measure you meet with all, it will be measured back unto you again. So if you give deliverance to someone, then God will send you deliverance. If you give healing to someone, God will send you healing. If you uh, offer and bless people, you know, with money, God will send you money. Come on, somebody. Jesus said, and then he said, be careful how you hear because with the same measure you hear, then I will give you more, right? But... He said, be careful how you hear, because then if you don't hear right, he will take away even that which you thought you had. My God. So that's a scary verse to me. Even what you thought you had? You mean you thought? I thought I had something I didn't? What? Okay. So be careful how you hear. With whatever measure, that's the law of reciprocity. Come on, reciprocity. You know, I give a certain amount and it's given back unto me, right? So reciprocity works. In the kingdom and I taught you guys about the laws and the principles of the kingdom on a, on a prophetic word I, a, a while back so he says I got a message he, he he brought me through some deliverance which I had been praying to God to give me some deliverance but it all happened according to the mystery that is in the scriptures meaning it's hid in the scriptures and that's the last verse I want to give you to prove my point to any theologians or naysayers that are on here, I'm going to prove the point right now. Okay, look at this. And it's here. It's been here the whole time. Romans 16. Look at this. Verse 25. We'll start at verse 24, 25, 26. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Now to him that it has the power, listen to this, to establish you according to my gospel. Why does Paul say my gospel? Because it was the gospel that Jesus, by the revelation of Jesus, right? It was not given to him by a man. It was given to him by revelation. Jesus continued to appear to him in visions, in, in revelation, and show him the gospel. It wasn't a pattern of man. Come on, this is what we're talking about on this prophetic word. It's not going to be man's pattern. It's God, the Father, the Pater, the Pattern, the Father. Okay, because Jesus did everything after his Father. So it says, my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according, here it is, According to the revelation of the mystery, here it is, which was kept secret, my God, since the world began. It's been kept secret. <laughs> but, verse 26, mark it down. But now, hallelujah, is made manifest by the scriptures of the prophets. Come on. Or the ESV says the prophetic scriptures, right? By the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known unto all nations for the obedience of faith. And then it also says in the ESV, to bring about the obedience of faith to unto all nations, right? So here it is, this revelation of the mystery, which has been kept secret since the world began, verse 26, but now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets. Come on, somebody. According to the commandment of the everlasting God made known unto all nations. Hallelujah. Because the gospel is going to be preached to the uttermost ends of the world. Then the end will come, right? It's made known unto all nations for the obedience of faith. Then I seen, I seen in the heaven, it was uh, nations and kingdoms and uh, thrones and people of all kindreds, tongues and nations standing before the Lamb. Hallelujah. Because it's going to be people of all nations, kindreds, tongues. Listen, God is not a respecter of persons. If you're in Christ, you should not be one either. Come on, somebody. If you're in Christ, you should not be a respecter of persons either. You shouldn't judge people from the outward appearance by the color of their skin or the nationality they're from. Listen, you will not be like your father if you judge from the outer appearance. Because what did he tell? First Samuel chapter 16, 7, he told King David, right? They all thought, well, I, we're going to pick Saul because he's a head higher than all the other people, right? But Saul was hiding in some little barrel, right? Saul wasn't 
He wasn't a man after God's own heart like David was. And David so no. I mean, God said no, but I got a man. He's after my heart. Hallelujah. He's after my heart. And he says, he says he, to Samuel, take a horn of oil, 1 Samuel chapter 16, and go anoint David. Because I have chosen David to be king over Saul. I have rejected Saul, and I've chosen David. The Lord said I'm going to be out ready to reject some Sauls and choose some Davids. Come on. Some people that are after God's own heart. Come on. Because he said in 1 Samuel. Uh, 2 Samuel, 1 Samuel 16 and 7, he says, God does not look after the outward appearance, but God looking on the heart. Come on, somebody. If you're looking at men and women with the outward appearance, you're not looking at him like God is looking at him. you got to look on the heart because God is looking on the heart. And this is going to be the answer to these race wars. Come on, somebody in the street. Come on. Black, white, whatever we are, we're all one in Christ. By one blood, Acts 17, has all nations been made. And the times appointed have been set from the foundation. So the times appointed that they should go. Okay? So all nations can come to the Lord. This is part of that mystery. That all nations will come. All kindreds, all people. God created us all. God is no respecter of persons. And neither should we be. Okay? And so this is where the God wants to land this plane right here, is that we have got to come to a new pattern. And that pattern has to be after our Father, the Pater in heaven. Okay? And we do what God says do as Jesus did. He said, I don't do, I don't do, I only do after what my Father does. Okay? And then he said in John 17, 7, 717, you can, you can change them around. John 17, 7, when I teach, whether it be of men or whether it be of God. So John 7, 17, the Lord is challenging his church. John 7, 17, when you see it, he said, If any man or woman will do my will, they will know wherein of the doctrine I teach, whether it be from men or whether it be from my Father in heaven. Right? So you will know if it's from the supernatural or it's from the natural. Is it from the man or is it from God? Right? And so that if you do my will, all things after the counsel of his own will, Ephesians 1 11, then you will know the mystery of Christ. You'll know wherein the doctrine wherein I preach. And so I want you to know that that new pattern is coming and God is pouring out his blessings upon his church. Many, many things are coming. Listen, you guys got to step out on faith because listen, the Lord told me, um, I was needing a new car, and the Lord said, uh, go out and buy yourself a car. And I said, well, Lord, I don't know if I can afford those payments. And he said, are you not my prophet? And I said, yeah, well, yeah, I'm your prophet, Lord. And he said, well, don't you think I'll buy you a, a, a new car and give you new things that you need? And I said, yes, sir, Lord. And he said, okay, well, go get it. And I, I went and got, you know, I just said, okay, well, I'll, I'll make a few payments, whatever. And do you know, for the last two months, just happened today, somebody... I, I, I was like, uh, a, a donation came in that was the exact amount for my car payment. Come on, somebody. So I don't even, I was like, God said, listen, I will, you step out of faith. Here's the problem with the church is we think that God is going to do everything. But God is saying, you need to step out of faith and do some things. And when you step out of faith, God will meet you. And you know, he's paid that car payment insurance every month. And it was not even, it was extra money put in the account. So the Lord said, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony, Revelation 12, 11, we overcome Satan. So when God does something for you, don't brag about it, but testify. You can testify. It's not bragging, it's testifying, okay? Because there's a few people on here that I know, some of my spiritual daughters, that God wants to give you a vehicle. I don't know if you're on here, um, Sister Tamisha. But God wants to give you a vehicle, a new vehicle. And so he wants you to step out of faith and go get that car, okay? And he said he's going to supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Okay, Philippians 4.19. So step out of faith in this season and know that God wants to uh, show you his mystery, okay? This thing has been hid from ages and generation, but it's now being revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Okay, so I love you guys. We'll talk soon and God bless you.